very much. 22 minutes to eight. Making it big in the music industry is hard enough for anybody. But what if you also had a condition which left you unable to leave your home for two whole years? Singer Gemma Pixie Hickson, who's 20, has agoraphobia. That, of course, is a marked fear of open spaces or crowds. Despite her condition, more than two million people have watched her perform because she turned her bedroom into a makeshift studio and published videos on YouTube, like this one. Have a look. Stick with myself because I have no one left. You took with you my soul. The pain sets in, keeps me from sleeping. Slowly succeeding, I think I'm dreaming. I can see. Pixie Hickson on uh, YouTube. We can talk to her now. Also to Dr. Jennifer Wilde, who's a psychologist specialising in the treatment of agoraphobia. Good morning to you both. Hello. Let's have a word with you, Gemma, first. Good morning. That's a wonderful music, all composed in the privacy of what? Do you have your own bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been in the house for? When did, and when did your condition first start to affect you? Um, I've had panic attacks and anxiety since I was about six years old, um, but it's kind of something that gradually gets worse and now I've been housebound for two years. Mm. Gemma, what happens when you leave the home? Um, well, I haven't for two years, but yeah. if I but were to before. try to leave the home, um, I'd just get really bad panic attacks and, you know, it would take over your mind and your body and you get heart palpitations and your head would feel just horrible. It's like mm. the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. Mm. So you've got this remarkable success on YouTube. I mean, more than two million people have, uh, have had a look at your, your songs. I mean, you should be a very successful singer, but the difficulty is, you, you, for somebody with your condition, it's kind of the worst kind of business, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But um, it's kind of weird because as soon as I start singing, I feel like a completely different person. So like in everyday life, I'm kind of unconfident and nervous and panicky. But as soon as I'm singing, I just feel kind of almost confident and I just love to sing. So. And you've got a beautiful voice, Gemma, which is why it's so popular and so many people have been listening to you. I wonder though, Thank you. you being unable to, to leave the house for the past two years, has your success made you think that, that you will try again to leave the house or is that just something that you can't contemplate still? Um, I mean the success is really good but um, you know my situation with my agoraphobia is still the same and kind of it doesn't really change the fact that I do have this kind of um, illness but mm. I would love to try and start to get out more because I really do just want to get back and perform on stage again. Mm. Have you been able to record commercially? Can you, can you sell what you're recording in your home? Um, it's just kind of, I just write my own music really and just sometimes do collaborations with DJs so they'll make music and I'll kind of sing bits for them and they'll just put it all together. So, mm. Mm. Gemma, you were saying at the beginning that you were fearful of going out from when you were quite young. Do you remember any sort of trigger that, that, that set off the panic attacks? Do you remember any one occasion when it happened and then it just got progressively worse? Um, I can remember like lots of different things, but obviously when you're that young, you don't really realise what's going on. You don't really know what a panic attack is. You just kind of fear it, feel it more as like fear. And um, but I remember in shopping centres, I always felt really panicky, and I just remember saying to my mum, "I have to get out of this shop and just get home." And I just always wanted to get back to my safe place, which was my home. So. Mm -hmm. All right, stay with us, Gemma. We're just kind of a quick word uh, with Dr. Jennifer Wilde, who's a consultant psychologist. Morning. Morning. You better tell us really what agoraphobia is all about, first of all? Well, agoraphobia is really, it's a fear of being in a situation or a place for which escape, uh, the person perceives escape will be difficult or impossible or they may have a panic attack and it will be embarrassing and they won't get help. It is often linked, as it is with Gemma, to having a panic attack early on, um, not always in childhood but in adolescence. And from that point, the person fears having panic attacks again in public and will fear and avoid crowds being uh, in a queue, 
uh, public transport, even going over a bridge would cause a lot of anxiety. And what would be the usual treatment when people come to you and they say they have, or you go to them presumably, when they say they have acrophobia, how would you deal with it? Exactly. Well, with acrophobia, we would go to the person, especially when it's as severe as they're unable to leave their house. Mm -hmm. We would recommend cognitive behavioral therapy. So this is really looking at the, the fears people have, the thoughts they have, and how this links to their feelings and then their behaviors. And often with panic disorder and agoraphobia, we misinterpret bodily sensations for signs of danger. So we start to monitor how quickly our heart is beating and then may perceive that if it escalates more, we'll have a heart attack, we may die, we may pass out, those sorts of How um, unusual worries. is it for somebody not to be able to leave their home for two years? That's, it's quite a severe case, um, but it's not impossible to treat. CBT is very effective for panic disorder and agoraphobia, very, very effective. Mm. Um, and that's what I would want to be offering, Gemma. Mm. Yeah. Gemma, is that something you've tried or would like to try? Yeah, um, I've seen, um, like a long time ago, I saw doctors and then they passed me on to like gateway workers and you go through a massive system of like um, the mental health kind of stuff. Um, I've tried hypnotherapy, EFT, I've done some behavioral therapy. I have done quite a lot, but um, I would like to see more therapists and stuff because I really do want to get over this. Um, I do kind of know that it is also down to me. Like I know that I can have lots of techniques that will help me um, and all the support needed, but I do know that I've got to be the person who kind of takes the step and faces my fears. Right. So. I mean, uh, obviously, you know, people that really admire your, your work. Have you had a lot of feedback from fans? And we have somebody here this morning, just while you've been on air, saying, fantastic, uh, your music reminds them of Kate Bush, which is quite a compliment, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've been told that before, actually. Um, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, you get it's really nice to hear people you, actually supporting. Yeah, I was going to say, do you get a lot of messages of support from people around the world? Yeah, I get a lot of um, like fan pictures sent in and stuff, which is amazing because I still can't get over how many people are kind of watching me. When you're just making a video in your bedroom, you don't expect that many people to be watching. So it's a bit crazy, really. Well, congratulations. And we do hope, as you say, you want to get back out on stage and we, we hope you can do that. Maybe, um, maybe our doctor can come and see you and, uh, and, and equip you yeah, with some of the lovely. tools that, that, that might help. All right. Thanks very much. Gemma, thanks. Yeah, All Gemma. the best. All the best. Thank you very Jennifer, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the time now is 14 minutes to eight. This is breakfast.